Here we go with the last example from 24B, example number four. So we've got, uh, we're dealing with normal distribution still. We're using the calculator to TI Inspire. Okay, so the time taken by students to complete a puzzle is normally distributed. Haha, -ha, there is our clue. Normally distributed. Okay, so that means X is distributed normally. With mean 28.3 minutes, mean 28.3 and standard deviation 3.4 so 3.4 squared because we write the variance there that's a comma and those are decimals okay uh, calculate the probability that a randomly selected student remember this is important we're dealing with random variables in chapter 23 and 24 random probability we want to make sure uh, it's random. It's, it's not rigged. It's not biased. So a randomly selected student took at least 30 minutes. So this means 30 minutes or more, which means our lower bound would be 30 and our upper bound would be infinity. Or that 9 times 9 to the power, uh, 10 to the power of 999. All right, to complete the puzzle, let's uh, just represent this on a diagram, the mean is 28.3, and we're looking for 30 or more. So 30 is on the right-hand side of that mean. So we're looking for this area. So we know at least that it should be smaller than 50%. All right, so here we go. Calculator, TI Inspire, menu, probability, distributions, normal CDF. Our lower bound is 30. I could even write a 30 in there, I guess. Let's see here, 30. Uh, our upper bound is infinity, so the 9 times 10 to the power of 999. Uh, the mean 28.3, standard deviation 3.4. Press OK. 0 0.30. So we would say x distributed normally 28.3 comma 3.4 squared. The probability that x is greater than or equal to 30 equals 0 0.309. And does that make sense? Smaller than 50%? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, now here's where it gets interesting because now we're going to start talking about us taking a certain number of those trials. Okay, part B says, out of 10 randomly selected students. Okay, so now we have this normal distribution. We know how the percentages work on the normal distribution curve, but now we are going to take 10 randomly selected students. Okay. This is going to be a major hint for us. 10 randomly selected students. What's, uh, out of 10 randomly selected students, at most half of them took at least 30 minutes. So we're still looking at least 30 minutes to complete the puzzle. Well, we already figured out in part A what the probability is of this happening. Okay, and that probability is 0 0.309. And perhaps we wanna, use more digits because uh, we're using that number again, so not rounding it. So 308538 is what my calculator says. Okay, from part, from part A. All right, this is now binomially distributed. We are either looking for, of these 10 folks selected, we're looking for either they're taking 30 minutes or longer or they're not taking 30 minutes or longer. So that's why it becomes now binomially distributed. This is distributed binomially, okay? Remember next comes N and then P, okay? So N is the number of trials. Well, how many trials are we looking at? We're looking at 10. And the probability of success, so the probability of the thing that we're looking for is probability that takes them at least 30 minutes or more. So that's this probability, calculate it from part A. All right, and 
we're looking for at, at most half. Okay, so at most half, half of the 10. So half of the 10 is five at most. So we're also looking at four and three and two and one and zero. So we're looking at the binomial distribution, the binomial expansion, um, and we're going to add all of these together. We're not going to consider six, seven, eight, nine, or 10. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Distributed binomially. Now we know the lower and the upper bounds for this binomial distribution. And remember when we use our calculator, it will ask us for this. Lower bound is zero, upper bound five. Okay, this is how we notate it. So let's take a look at our calculator. We say menu, probability, distributions. Now, when we're distributing binomially, remember, we look for binomial, PDF or CDF. If we have an upper bound, lower bound and upper bound, then we use CDF. So we go to binomial CDF. We put in the number of trials, 10. Put in the probability of success, 0 0.308538. Put in the lower bound, which is zero. Put in the upper bound, five, and press OK. 0.946. Zero point nine four six. Let's see if that's the same answer they got in the textbook. Point nine three three eight. Hmm. They get a different number from part A. Greater than thirty point three one eight. Well then, let me go back and look at my calculations. 30, lower bound, upper bound, 28.3, 3.4. Oh, I did it differently than the textbook. They're using 3.6 standard deviation, and I used 3.4. Okay, so mine is still correct. <laughs> According to 3.4, if you use 3.6, like it says in example four, then you're going to get an answer of 0.318 for part A, and for part B, you're going to get 0.938, okay? But if you carried through the same uh, error that I did, just didn't write down the question correctly, um, then this is correct. Procedure is still correct. All right, have fun with that, guys.